Uh, my name is Alex Shield. I'm 29 years old from the United States of America. I first came to Thailand after I graduated um, from uh, college. I was actually living in China, um, and I had been competing and uh, wrestling and jujitsu and, and training some kickboxing in, uh, back in the states. Um, and so when I finished, I wanted to come. Uh, I wanted to come to Thailand really just to train Muay Thai and fight Muay Thai for a few months. Um, but I was always a jujitsu lover, so back then. This was seven years ago in late 2011. Um, when I was looking up gyms to train at, I noticed one, it was Tiger Muay Thai that had jiu-jitsu. So I wanted to train Muay Thai, but I also loved wrestling and jiu-jitsu. So um, at that time, this was really the only gym in the area. So fast forward seven years later, uh, I'm now a professional fighter and I'm a jiu-jitsu coach and a brown belt here at Tiger Muay Thai. Um, and I also do a few other things, uh, running some jiu-jitsu tournaments, but um, I, I think my reason for getting into fighting was like kind of that natural progression of um, I was always a smaller guy. So I just, when I grew up wrestling, I started wrestling when I was a kid because that even the playing field, right? All of a sudden you're going against guys your size, right? Like if you play football or soccer or something, it's the smaller guy has a, a big uh, disadvantage. So when I got to wrestling, it was like this is where I can kind of even things up a little bit. Um, and I also knew that like too, like even like in high school or something, like playing around with your friends or like you get in like little scuffles at school, uh, takedowns was where I would do best, right? It was hard for me to hit anybody. So um, after I, I was, um, I was a pretty good wrestler in high school, a pretty good, not, nothing spectacular, but pretty good. Um, could wrestle like a small D3 school or something in college, but um, it just wasn't uh, what I wanted to do. So I, I stopped wrestling and I went to college at the University of Arizona um, partying the whole college life, drinking every day and doing that. And my body was just kind of falling apart from my whole life of training wrestling and then going through that. Um, and then a year into college, I, uh, I, there was a guy uh, from a jiu-jitsu gym nearby and I had met him and he asked me to come on in. And um, so I went from wrestling thinking I was a bad dude. I can, you know, take somebody down to, all right, let me see if I'm really a bad dude. Let me see if I can choke somebody out now. Um, and then I think it progressed more to, all right, I can choke somebody out, but can I knock him out? Can I choke him out when he's trying to knock me out? Um, so it was kind of just this uh, test of myself to kind of see how, how far I could, um, kind of how far I could push myself and, and see how I can do in, in, in real fighting situations. Um, in Asia, I don't know. I know that uh, in Singapore they had like a, a ADCC has d they do like open tournaments, not the big one, but they do open tournaments, and they just did one in Singapore. So I think that was uh, sub only rules. Um, but yeah, I'm not too sure. My um, my format is a little bit different, obviously, because it is a tournament. You have to move through brackets. Um, it's it's uh, sub only. We do kind of a hybrid rules um, where there's sub only points and sudden death. So I think I'm the only one with my rule set. I've lived in Phuket for, for a long time. I just have. And I've trained a lot of jiu-jitsu here. I've done a lot of things here. Um, and uh, I think kind of like anything that just kind of happens organically anywhere, but especially in a place like Phuket, like over seven years, seeing the growth of how fast, not just Muay Thai, not just MMA, but jiu-jitsu in Phuket, um, just like anything, it was just there was just a need for it, really, honestly. Um, there was other tournaments that had happened uh, in Phuket, um, and they were great. You know, like there was the, the Kata Beach Open, the guys down at Phuket Top Team put that on. Um, they did one at the temple. It was great. They did an in-house one. Um, they are cool. They are all great. Um, but for me as like um, a fighter and a competitor, I want to compete more. So it just came from me being like, man, I wish there was more tournaments in the area. Um, you know, there was one going on in Bangkok. There was the Copa de Bangkok that was kind of went away for a few years and it would happen and it wouldn't happen. Um, and there was another one in Bangkok called the CM Cup that just recently started. But really in Phuket, there was just there was just nowhere to compete. And somebody who's living in Thailand, it was really hard for me to uh, fly to Malaysia, fly to Singapore, fly to the Philippines for these tournaments. Um, it's easier if there's a local tournament. So the idea really came, um, man, 2013, 2014, uh, me and my roommate were talking about it at that time. And we had kind of gone through plans, but um, at that time we... Uh, we really didn't really know much of what we were doing and it was a nice idea, but it was just, um, um, we just never went through with it until uh, 2017. It, it was just kind of um, me and somebody else were speaking about doing a tournament and um, he ended up not uh, continuing with it, but um, it just really came out of a need. As a, uh, as a competitor, I want to compete all the time. So 
I think all these other people are having the same need here too. We have really, really high level guys uh, training all the time and maybe they fight MMA a few times a year or beginners, maybe they're, they're just starting out but they wanna test themselves and see what's going on. They live here for a month, two months, three months. Um, they need an opportunity to, to compete. So um, it really just came out of a need for a tournament, really. Um, biggest inspiration? Um, man, I have, there's a lot of people that inspire me, truthfully, um, for different things. I, I think I do a lot of, I try to do a lot of different things. Um, you know, a lot of them revolve around jujitsu and fighting, but. Um, Who do you look up to? Man, there, there's a few people, you know, uh, really that comes to mind, or really the, the, the people around me that I really look up to. I think that's important. You know, guys like George Hickman and Frank Hickman. Um, I've known these guys for a long time. Um, been my coaches in my corners, my training partners. Um, you know, guys like Amelia Yerudia, uh, a guy that came out here just like me, kind of looking for an opportunity and really grinded and fought. And uh, man, went to, to you, know, um, you know, didn't fight in the best of places, but you know, it all paid off for him. He ended up fighting now for one championship and doing really well. Um, man, there's, there's, honestly, there's a lot of guys that inspire me, a lot of my friends. Um, uh, you know, seeing guys like Alex Volkanovsky, who's who was you know one of our guys for a long time, and now he's you know climbing his ranks in the UFC. Man, there's a lot of guys like this, um, and really one of the guys who really inspires me the most, truthfully, is uh, my first jujitsu coach. His name is uh, Josh Hinger. Um and back then he wasn't, and actually he just so he uh, he just won his third straight no gi world title uh, a few days ago, and. When I first started training with him, he was like a no-gi guy, like a purple belt. Like we were just kind of doing it together. It was at our gym, and we went our ways. He gave me a blue belt. I came out here. He went and did his thing. Um, fast forward till now, he's um, a coach at Atos, one of the best gyms in the world. Uh, Three-time black belt, no-gi champion. Um, and he did it when he was he, he didn't win his first title till he was like 34. And Man, how could that not inspire you? You know, there, especially in fighting, there's always people like, man, there's always this younger guy coming in, coming in. But um, at 34, this guy became a black belt world champion and one of the most popular people in jiu-jitsu today. So um, definitely one of my biggest inspirations. You just had a knee surgery. Uh, why did you have that? What, what happened? How's it going now? Uh, man, that, uh, yeah just kind of like everybody who grapples and fights they got knee problems and i think i had um, i had some knee problems over the years just from training and have little pops here and there and different things and I just kind of rub the dirt off and get back to training um but uh, i was supposed to fight for a one warrior series uh in what was the month was this in october. october october yeah october 11th i was supposed to fight and two weeks before my fight um uh, i completely tore my acl during training um, we had a big pop, and we went and get, went for an MRI, and they told me the whole thing was gone. So, uh, unfortunately, I had to pull out of that fight. But um, I kind of got this long-awaited surgery, and um, I'm excited to be honestly better than I ever was before. So, again, different, different. There's a lot of different things I enjoy doing. You know, like there's I have a lot of hopes as um, a fighter to to become the best fighter I can be, fight at the highest level I can fight at, and do well doing it. Um, as a coach, um, you know, I want to get better as a coach. I think I'm still learning. I've been coaching now for about four years, and <clears throat> um, I'm more excited now. I feel more comfortable coaching, so um, I'm excited to become a better coach and, and see my students do well and, and um, kind of just pass on what other people have passed on to me. I'm excited to see them, see what they do with it. Um, as a tournament organizer for CM Sub Series, um, I want to make this, you know, and I think my, I've proven this already through three events. Um, I want to show that we can have uh, levels, we can have really talented competitors at every level. You know, we can have competitor, beginners getting in there and really pushing themselves and fall in love with jiu-jitsu. And then we can have advanced and professional divisions um, with really, really high level guys. So um, I want, you know, as far as more specifically for CM Sub-Series, um, I want this to be, uh, the best jiu-jitsu tournament in Phuket. I want it to be the best jiu-jitsu tournament in Thailand. I want it to be the best jiu-jitsu tournament in Southeast Asia and Asia. And eventually I want this to be one of the premier tournaments in the world, um, which I really believe it can happen, um, just given by the, the atmosphere of Phuket and Soi Thaed. And we have a few world famous gyms here and um, we have some really, really high level guys. So um, I want to give a light to those guys and kind of show people the, the level we have here. What style defines you most as a fighter? 
what style defines me most? I don't know. Mm, I don't know. Um, I uh, obviously, you know, I, I do come from like a grappling background. So I think when, uh, like when, when the going gets tough, I probably go to my instincts of my wrestling background, my jujitsu background. But I want to be proficient everywhere. I want to have good striking. Um, I want to have good wrestling, good defensive wrestling, um, and good attacks and good submissions. So um, I, yeah, obviously everyone has like a vision of what they have in their head of what they want to do in the fight. I want to do it all, right? I want to be able to do it all. But truly, I want to be comfortable everywhere. I don't want to have um, get exposed. You know, I don't want someone to be like, man, he's only a grappler or he's only a striker, only this. So um, I think I'm working on my style. I think uh, it's, it's kind of a work in progress each fight. When do you think you'll get back into fighting? Um, so I'm like seven weeks out of surgery now, so I feel pretty good so far, but I know that, you know, doing, looking online and talking to a lot of people, it's better to take your time. So <clears throat> ideally, um, nine months, 10 months, I'd, I'd like to fight again. Um, but that's, I got to just see what my body does. It's, it's really hard to say. So, um, what I want to be member as, I mean, I think, um, man, just man that I, that I, that I, it sounds super cheesy, but I did the best I could do. I was in there and I trained hard. I prepared well. Um, I showed heart. Um, I really just did my best. I, I want people to, to remember, man, this, this guy did his best. And I give entertaining fights. Um, I like entertaining people. I like talking to people. Um, I want people to be interested in my fighting, you know. So, um, man, I want people to, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just want people to, to, to look at me and be like, man, he did it. He, he went out there and he, he did it. So, What advice would you give to people who are just getting started? Uh, just getting started, um, compete as much as you can at whatever. If you want to fight MMA, compete in jiu-jitsu. Compete in smoker Muay Thai fights, smoker boxing fights. Just compete all the time. At that level, when there's not much risk for injury, compete as much as you can. Um, yeah, that's what I would recommend. Compete as much as you can and, and, uh, and also find a team and a coach that you really get along with. Don't feel like you go to one gym and maybe there's some things you're not sure about and you feel like, oh, I just got to stay here because this is where it's at. You know, like I'd say, especially in the beginning, when you don't have any loyalty to anybody, go, go see who you, who you get on with, who you, who you feel comfortable with because uh, that's your team and that's the people who's going to inspire you. So, yeah.